It is now 7.30 on June the 27th, and I would like to welcome you all to our Mastery Monday. Mastery Monday is held on the fourth Mondays of the month from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., and it is open to all. This evening, you are in for a real treat, as this is the end of this current Toastmaster year 2021 to 2022. We have invited our special guest who is going to become familiar to all of you over time. And he is going to be giving his presentation this evening on his vision for District 18. Kanan Sankara had joined Toastmasters in 2012 and he has been a member of various clubs all over the world. He is very passionate about Toastmasters as Toastmasters helped him in improving his speaking skills and leadership skills. He has fulfilled all the club officer roles multiple times. He has also been the program quality director, an area director and a division director. As a Pathways Guide for both District 18 and District U, Kanan has connected with clubs all over the world. He has helped the clubs to adapt to the Pathways curriculum with ease. He himself has completed all 11 paths two times, and he will be completing all the paths for a third time coming up here fairly soon. Of course, because of this completion rate, he has received the Distinguished Toastmaster seven times and is currently working on his eighth. He is the recipient of the Toastmaster of the Year Award and Division Director of the Year Award. He is very passionate to help all clubs and Toastmaster members alike adapt to Pathways Easily. Let us welcome your incoming District 18 District Director, Distinguished Toastmaster, Kanan Sankara. Thank you, Madam Program Quality Director. We are the best. We are the best because we can overcome any challenges thrown at us. Every one of the human being is having challenges, but we excel in overcoming them. Overcoming the challenges is built in our DNA. We have the tenacity to overcome the challenges. We innovate the ways to overcome the challenges. For the last three years, we had pandemic. We could not see each other's face because everybody's face was covered. Everyone was covered with masks. We can't go to the market, supermarket, whenever we wanted. We did not sit and cry. We fought and found vaccine. We fought and found the ways to overcome. We want to be stronger. We want to become stronger. So my, my vision for this district is building stronger than ever. For the last three years, we had pandemic. We were losing clubs. We were losing members. We had great leaders. They were trying to work how can we build it stronger? So my, my vision for this District 18 as a district director will be building stronger than ever. We need to rebuild. This is the time to rebuild because we don't have to wear the mask now. We can go wherever we want. We can take a flight. We can book a seat and we can go wherever. So fellow Toastmasters, let us forget about the pandemic now. Let us not worry about 
oh, we, ha we have to do this. We have to work in the Zoom meeting. It is up to us. We can go for the hybrid meeting. We can do whatever we want. We can bring more members. We can talk to members. We can ask the members who has left, but we have to build the district stronger than ever. So what I'm going to do is to have the strategies aligned to achieve this statement. First, for the last three years, last four years, you can take it from 2018 to 2022 now. We are losing clubs year after year because at that time, pandemic was at the peak from 123 club, it slowly dropped to 117, 104, and 87. Our members have dropped from 5,166 to slowly, we have lost around 2,000 members, approximately. So my first strategy is, okay, we, have, we, we need to make sure we cannot go like this. We need to stop the bleeding. We want to make sure we don't lose any more clubs. We don't lose any more members. First, when we get the wound, when the blood is coming, what we do? We put a bandage. We need to stop the blood flowing out. We need to stop the members. We need to stop losing the members. We need to stop losing the club. So my primary strategy is to stop the bleeding. We will be trying to recover the clubs that we are having that are low in membership. We will do that step by step. So this will be my first goal, my first strategy. My strategies will be coming through, coming to address this. First will be the stop the bleeding. Second, if you see our district 18 on the pathways adoption rate, our adoption rate is really surprising. You know why? The new members have only 48% of the pathways adoption rate. Is that not surprising? Because every new member must have pathways as the educational curriculum. When you enroll a new member, immediately you enroll them in pathways. You do not have a choice. We must make sure these new members understand about pathways and make sure that we educate them, we promote the pathways. We need to make sure, if you see the pathways adoption, our district is very low. It is around 80%. For the new members, it is around 48%. That is really concerning for me. And even the officers, only 94%. We should be having 99% as officers must be the leaders to show that, to show to the new members, hey, Pathways is the educational curriculum. Some of us may not like Pathways, but we do not have a choice. The pathways, we need to make sure we adapt to Pathways. We need to make sure we see how we can use the Pathways in effective communication and leadership. So my primary goal is to make, this is also my another primary goal, to make the pathways adaption rate from 80% to 90%. My new members adaption rate should go from 48% at least to 95% because new members must be enrolled in pathways. I'm going to ask my officers, why they are at 94%, why can't be 100%. I'm going to talk to them. I will be working with them and, and I can provide, I can bring pathways experts to our, to help them. If you know one thing I want to share proudly, District 18 has many pathways experts. Many of the world members, members all over the world, looking to Frank Story's website, and saying, hey, what is next? What should we do? We have the expert in our district. We did not use him 
very well. We are going to use his website. We are going to use him. We are going to make sure that every new member is enrolled and make sure that they are successful in pathways. That is my second thing. Third, traveling Toastmasters. This is a concept I brought in District 21 and it became a very high successful. What is that I will tell you? We have Toastmasters who are very eager to help us, even though they did not take any leadership role. They said, Kanan, I will help you. You become the district director. I will provide any support you need. On the day I was sending a mail to Jim Book. Jim Book says, Kanan, I will support you. There are many leaders like that. They are willing to help. So we are going to make the pool of those members and they will help to go to the by Zoom to go to the struggling clubs with the lower members one to nine because those clubs are having challenges in fulfilling the roles. I was talking to our public relations manager. She said her club, only four members need to take the roles again and again. Other people are members, they are not attending the meeting. This provides fatigue to the leaders. I want to make sure these pooled resources attend those type of clubs and make sure they fill the roles. So what happens is the fatigue is gone. They don't have to repeat the same role again and again. The new traveling Toastmasters will help them to take those roles and make sure that guests are welcomed appropriately. That will help also in another way. We can convert those guests as members. Instead of having a club meeting with four or five members, these traveling Toastmasters provide the club quality to those meetings. They can help them grow that club. I am going to ask, I already requested our club growth director to find those pool of members. So we are going to request to create the pool and start sending them to those clubs. The idea is to make sure that we recover the members. When Wesley Gibbs joined the club growth team, he brought the entire leaders. Fantastic, enthusiastic club team. And with his team, under his leadership, I think, and with the traveling Toastmasters, I think that club growth will be phenomenal in this year. That is my hope. <clears throat> One of the area director asked me, Kanan, you said that I can be an area director. You said that I have, I, I, have a, I have become a qualified Toastmaster because I have fulfilled in the club officer role. I have become I have given the speeches five years. I have already fulfilled level four and level five. And you said that I'm ready for the area director. But I do not know what to do. I do not know what as an area director will do. Fellow Toastmasters, we, I, I, I assured him, we are going to train them on the job. We are not asked them to plunge into the water without the lifeboat. We are going to provide them the lifeline. We are going to train them how to perform the roles. Not only that, we are going to help them with some leadership help so that they are not alone. And I have, our division directors already told, uh, yesterday I had the meeting on Sunday morning. They said, we are already started the council. These are all positive things, positive vibes on when I hear that. Oh, I, we have started the division council. Our area directors already started working on having the area council. Those are the things good. We had one deck training. 
if you don't know what what is the deck it is executive council directors of executive councils kathleen is that correct kathleen is looking at that and club officer training we are going to provide that in some district we call it as a dot district officer training dot and cot okay either way whatever we call we are going to train them on the job that is what is required and another thing is we will be providing additional training to the members what you may ask kanan how do you know what the members need how do you know what type of training they need whether they need in person training whether they need zoom training how do you guide that when i took over in district 21 as the program quality director first thing i did i did not listen to anyone still i don't listen to anyone i sent a survey i asked the members hey i am the new guy here what can i do for you so i'm going to ask the members fellow members you are coming out of the pandemic now you tell me what you need i will try to fulfill your request i i am not promising here i am going to fulfill all your request <clears throat> i am telling you that i am going to fulfill most of your request but the top one will be definitely done like that on the scale of 1 to 10 whatever is at the point we will go in the hierarchical order and make sure that we provide adequate training i am going to encourage most of the clubs to go for the hybrid meeting the one advantage of hybrid meeting is people who want to be in in person can do in person we don't have to lose the members that already joined from out of district 18 i know some of the clubs have members who are from california who are from atlanta who are from florida who are from other states we don't have to lose them that is also i'm thinking of providing that training hybrid training and make sure that we will be able to cover that we will also provide periodic pathways workshop i have not even talked to frank story i am going to talk to him i am going to also bring a pool of pathways experts and if i am not getting sleep i will join some of the club and help them to provide the pathways training also and one advantage i am going to uh, do is i am going to bring leaders and a world champion of public speaking to our district to provide training i am going to bring like great uh, leaders like pat jones international president like pat johnson or um, you can uh, uh, you can beverly toastmaster beverly like that many people who have excelled either in the leadership or in the in the world uh, in the public speaking i want to bring them why because they can train our members so that they can also become successful we need role models fellow toastmaster if somebody says that kanan you need to do that i can't do i if they say hey kanan you need to be like him i want to be like him in public speaking i want to be like the previous district leaders district leader directors i can remember many district leaders district directors i could see mervin in front of me i could see tony witten i could see elizabeth carter i could see cynthia williams many great district leaders if you tell them i want to be like them i want to be i want to i want to follow those they, they are like role models for me same way i will bring many role models to our members so that they can see what where we can go with this training we can go and we can reach those places that is my goal that is my uh, you, you know that i am very passionate i want to make sure that my our district members should receive all those attention make sure that everybody comes here and help on that if necessary i am not sure i didn't talk to the pqr 
duty. I cannot promise now if necessary, we can once again, based on the members request. I am not making a call here. Members will make a call. We can increase the mastery uh, uh, Monday to bi-weekly. It is once again, it is up to the members. I am willing to get the trainers to train you all. But if there are no, if there is no participation, I can't do anything. I want to finish this. What I need from the District 18 members? I need participation. When I send a survey, I need the response. I don't want a response of 1%. And the, all the remaining 99% of the members listen to the 1% response. I want active participation in re responding to my surveys. I have asked to find a logo. I already sent, uh, so I have already sent one. Um, uh, I think I sent a newsletter two to, 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 I think two to three weeks ago, a mail requesting a logo contest. We did not get any response. So I am going to tell you, we want a logo for our mission, building stronger than ever. A team of people will review the logo received and we will make sure that once, uh, once uh, your logo is selected, immediately they will get their gift certificate of $50 immediately. I can, I can definitely guarantee on that. I want you to participate in the logo contest. I want exciting logos so that District 18 will be known. Oh, this person, this District 18 is always doing differently. This District 18 has got great people. I want to show it to the world. I want to make sure that they recognize that we have great people here. Then I also want, I already mentioned to you, I am going to send a survey. This will come on the first week of July because we are trying to work on that. And we will be sending what type of training the members require. And the third, I also want to know, A, whether you want to have an in-person district conference in next April, May or you prefer to have online conference. You will not believe in our work environment, they had a recent survey. You know that I always tell stories. Most of us know. They asked, ah, you guys are three years, you are all glued to working from home. Can we open? How many of you are ready to come in person? So everybody thought, okay, in-person will be around 90 to 95%. Fellow Toastmasters, this is, I'm talking about one of the healthcare organization, one of the very promising healthcare organization, but the result was totally opposite. Everyone, most of us, I will not say everyone, most of the majority of them preferred to work from home. So I am going to, Send a survey without assuming every postmaster will require an in-person district conference. I'm not going to assume. I'm going to ask the Toastmasters. I'm going to ask the members, hey, what do you need? Whether you want to have an in-person district conference or online conference. So that also, I will be getting the response from you. I may be a person who will send many surveys because I want to make sure I understand from you before making any decision. I want to know what the members want, how the members will receive that, how the members, what are the members needs, how I can help them to achieve those. Those are my goals. I am also going to provide good incentives. We are not, we are just working on that. We did not get any budget from the Toastmaster International. So based on that, if they throw $100,000 to District 18, our incentive will be big. If they show little bit, then our incentive will be less. So based on that budget, we will provide more incentive. So I think 
In summary, I want to assure every member there are abundance growth opportunities. We are going to provide you growth opportunities. I want to request every one of the member to take charge. Pandemic is over. We are going to overcome the challenge. We want to build the district stronger than ever. We need to build it stronger than ever. When I finish this, my, my team finishes uh, this uh, position, when I want to lead this position, when I want to pass on the baton in 2023, I want to make sure that we build. I, will, I, I want to say proudly, our members help me to build this district stronger than ever. Now I'm going to ask, I'm going to yield the lectern to our club growth director who want to also eagerly waiting, who also want to share his vision to our district. Over to you, uh, Wesley. All right. Thank you, Kanan, and good evening, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Kathleen, I, do I have screen? Okay, perfect. All right. Let me start from the beginning. All right, so in this PowerPoint that I am sharing right now, we'll outline my vision for the incoming program year and also the team that will help me achieve this vision. So just going towards to my bio, it talks a little bit about my professional career and my Toastmasters career, uh, both that uh, I'm very proud of. And there's my contact information below if you ever need to reach out to me for inquiries or share ideas or just brainstorm suggestions and things you may have. I'd be more than happy to, to work with you and to figure out how we can help District 18 grow. So, you're going through some of the slides that I have with the, the qualification. So I'm gonna go through the district-wide goals. So in sharing Kanan's uh, vision, I also want to outline just specific goals that I have in mind for the club growth uh, position. So for me, it's to be a distinguished district. So what does that entail? Essentially, we need a 1.5% increase club net growth. That is essentially the number of paid clubs. It would define as paid club is a, a club with eight, a minimum of eight members. All right, and then for the increase 1.5 uh, net membership growth. So it means that where we end up on July 1st, we would need to increase that number by 1.5%. Of course, taking into account of members that will decide not to renew their membership and also need to figure out how do we add on to those members that may decide not to renew their membership. Right. And then the final goal is 40% cl uh, club base needs to be distinguished. So taking again, the, the total number of pay clubs that we have starting July 1st, we need to essentially do 40%, which will be the baseline number for to achieve distinguished status. So I'm just, because I have over 40 something slides, certainly not gonna have time to go through every single slide. So I'll just go through some of the more important slides. So you go with the current paid number of clubs that we have in the district, we're only 89. So our goal will need to be 91 if this number remains. Of course, we still have a few more days left in the program year, but just giving you a, a outline of if we were to start July 1st with 89 paid clubs, we will need to achieve 91 to get distinguished status or two, yeah. 
Then same thing for the District 18 membership. Our goal will be 3,394 if this number still holds. And then for the distinguished club base, we will start at zero, but we will need to achieve 36. Then we round it up from 35. And this is the situational analysis that we find ourselves in. Kanan highlighted that essentially we do have about 89 paid clubs. And then going through the District 18 membership, where you see that there has been a decline since the 2018 2019 program year. And then here for the District 18 club base. And then also the number of clubs chartered, where in 2017, 2018, we had chartered 11 clubs, whereas for this program year, we've only chartered one club. All right. And then here, this is where the fun begins. I am very proud of the district marketing team that will take place on July 1st. And here is what I call the dream team. These Toastmasters are, are truly amazing, very accomplished and just dedicated. So essentially here is just the, the statistics. So everyone on this list, we have incoming and not out incoming, we have outgoing and former area directors. We have outgoing division directors and former division directors we have two former district directors and Cynthia Williams and uh, with Crystal Johnson. And then my mentor will be Anthony or Tony Witten. And he is also a former district director. Um, you can see that we have truly amazing members. You know, Michael Hoy, former you know, division director, uh, Carl Barsky, he's the incoming finance manager, Teresa Hulso, uh, experienced Toastmaster Karina, former Division D director, then Deidre, she is the outgoing Division A director. Mark Patrick Glynn is the former, uh, he's the outgoing Area 14 director. We mentioned Crystal Johnson and Nancy Lewis is a, the former Area 72 director in Division G. So essentially going through each team, yeah, and there's a number of slides. I'm not going to go through every single slide, but I'm just going to give you an outline of what the club demo team will be responsible for. So for the club demo team, when we have a club and they have, or a prospect, they've expressed interest in Toastmasters to the degree, whether it be through it, them inquiring about Toastmasters and their geographic location yeah, um, essentially is within District 18, and we would begin that conversation. Or if we take the initiative and we find a prospect within our district and we begin that conversation where they want to learn more about Toastmasters and they, they see the proposition value behind it, that's where, you know, um, the demo team will work with the prospect to organize the official demo meeting so that they can see in person or virtually, this is how a Toastmasters meeting is conducted from start to finish. And this is what you will get from a well-run and well-organized Toastmasters meeting. And hopefully with that and other questions they may have during those conversations, is that's when you know, we, they will begin the, the process of officially chartering. So to do that, it requires not just the demo team, but for my stuff as well, to really observe the, 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 the demo, not the demo lead team, but the um, go online in Toastmasters International, the lead management system, and from there to really be able to evaluate the incoming leads and make sure that we are quick to responding to them to make sure that we follow that lead from start to finish. The, that will essentially be the demo team's 
its uh, responsibilities. And then we're going to go to the club sponsor team. So now that club has expressed, so now we have that prospect that they're interested and now they want to begin the process of chartering. But it's, as I said, it definitely is a process. You need to collect the, the appropriate amount of dues, you need the minimum of 20 members. It, you need to be able to also hold consistent meetings because a prospect may not have those 20 members right off the bat or the confirmations. We need to know how to conduct these meetings appropriately. So that way, when you have people who are interested and they see what Toastmasters meeting entails, and this is the value you get from Toastmasters that they will immediately say, oh, this is, I find great value in Toastmasters. This is something that want to invest in long term. So um, that's what the club sponsor chair, uh, Teresa Hetzel, will be responsible for, and as well as conducting the, the trainings. And you will see a common theme with the club sponsor chair, with the club retention chair, and with the club quality chair. All three of these individuals will be responsible for leading the trainings. And what I will define as the trainings is to hold them two times per year. So each chair will hold two trainings, one in the summertime and then one in the wintertime, reflecting the TLI schedule. And so that way that when people have expressed interest in, in they want to you know, pursue their DTM or they want to receive credit or they just want to help out any way possible you know, to impart their knowledge over to newer members that they are armed with the knowledge and they are informed on how to correctly and appropriately ensure that they can help out their target audience it would be new clubs would be struggling clubs or clubs that are in the the version chartering. So that's what Teresa will be responsible for. So now the great news, all that hard work is paid off and now we have the club that's officially chartered. And you think that the work has officially ended? Well, not so fast. The work has only begun. And this is where <laughs> this is where the club call of the chair will come into play. And so for Karina, she will be working with the, the new clubs and you wanna make sure that they have at least two mentors available to help guide them through the, the six month period of the chartering. And when you think about the chartering process, you have to think about the the club officers. How uh, how will club member club officers know how to fulfill their roles appropriately? We also have to you know, work on the different aspects of it, the from the, the marketing, from how you build membership, from you know paying dues. You know all that you know, really takes a lot of work and. You know, these new members, they're not going to know every single facet of their roles as club officers. So they need mentors to be able to help them guide through, you know, how to be leaders and to also learn about just the DTM process. And, you know, just in terms of seeing the goals of what is the criteria of earning a DTM? And how do you build a curriculum where you can encourage your new members to pursue and maybe one day obtain their DTM? Or if they want to become district leaders, they're not going to know this information off the bat. So this is why we need mentors to ensure that the clubs, they get off the right foot. And But I'm also proposing that it's that, yes, six months, I know that's the bare minimum, but I think that the mentors would really benefit, will really help the clubs if 
they stay longer than just a six month period, at least a year. That's what I'm proposing. So that way they can see the entire Toastmasters life cycle from everything from the uh, from the beginning of the Toastmaster year to, oh, if members want decide if they want to you know, participate in, in speech contests, that they know how to go about that process as well. And, you know, I'm very excited for what Korea has in store. Then I'm going to move over to the new source research uh, team, which will be led by Mark Patrick Quinn. And when we think about new clubs, the majority of new clubs are started when a, a lead inquires about Toastmasters and they're placed based on their geographic location. But I feel that we should be more aggressive and we should take a more proactive approach. And by doing that, we would have to find the leads, see where there's a natural interest in Toastmasters, it'd be corporations or it'd be associations or where there would also be community clubs or where people would want to build a community club. Uh, but to do that will require a communication template such as an email template or even a, a phone template. If uh, if the preferred method is to reach out via uh, cell phone, and then from there, you will just have the opportunity to propose, this is what Toastmasters is about. This is the WIIFM, the, the what's in it for me. This is how you and your prospective members will benefit from Toastmasters. This is the value that it will bring to you, to your corporation, and to your organization. And then also another function of that strategy is to reaffirm our, our alliance with Rotary. And so for not to necessarily poach members from Rotaries, but if there's a Rotarian that wants to um, work on public speaking, they will also want to work on leadership skills and that will help them in their personal endeavors that we could recommend that Toastmasters is for them they can have a dual membership with the Rotary Club and with Toastmasters International. I'm very excited to see what both Mark and Crystal propose. Okay, and then this is the club evaluation team. This is a new team that I thought of and just what Kanan was highlighting over how many Pay fewer, fewer pay clubs we have this year. I mean, yes, we can assign them, you know, club coaches, but however, you may, for whatever reasons, there may be people who may not be interested in, you know, taking on a club that's really struggling, but they still need our help. So to go by this, I'm asking uh, Nancy Lewis to reach out to all the incoming division directors, really acquire and, and really just understand what happened to this club. Why is the membership low? What's the root cause behind the club struggles? And then from there, we're gonna create a strategy in terms of how can we best serve the club and the members? So we take, for example, a club that is suspended. Is there a chance for that club to be revived? If there is no chance for that club to revive, then the club will fold. And it's just a reality. And, but we wanna also take away with learning opportunities. What happened during that journey that took a club from a charter 20 members down to pretty much on the verge of folding. Would we able to acquire that information? It's gonna make our district smarter and it's going to help us, again, fortify our strategy where we can help clubs who are facing these similar situations. 
And then for also for clubs that have one to five members, you know, can we help re reinvigorate these clubs? If the answer is no, then let's work with the members to help uh, find better clubs where they can not only continue their Toastmasters journeys, but they can also help those clubs become even stronger. And then for clubs that do have low membership, but if they also want to, they feel that they have a chance to revive their club and build their membership back up to pay their status, so how can we help them achieve that goal? So that's what Nancy will be leveraging her knowledge to ensure that we can get these clubs back in the right footing. So it's all about assessing where clubs and where the members are and just their appetite for wanting to continue their Toastmasters journeys. And then last but not least, it will be the retention you know, chair. So you know, we're looking at the, the club coaches where for clubs that are have fewer than 13 members, let's figure out how we can assign club coaches to these clubs. But first we wanna find out, is a club coach right for these clubs? It may not be, but that doesn't mean we're not going to help support them. So that's where not only we're going to create a curriculum to help these club coaches ensure that they have the right tools and resources so that they can guide their clubs to build up their membership and become stronger clubs. Uh, but we're also going to work with the division, with the area directors of those struggling clubs to really hone to what's behind their struggles. To so we'll look at you know, as a club, you know, is a club struggle with their membership or they just don't know how to find their members or what about the education goals? You know, do we have a situation where Toastmasters just are not engaged with pathways? So if that's a situation, let's figure out a strategy on how we can help those clubs. So it's really about getting to the heart of what's causing the clubs you know, to struggle and work with them with a customized solution that will help them get back to, to Providence. And so essentially that is my vision for Club Growth Director. The only piece that I'm still working on right now, but I will have in the near future are the incentives, um, but definitely stay tuned for that. But overall, I am very excited for this year. It, it will be challenging, but I feel that as we're heading towards a new normal that people are, those that may have quit Toastmasters, they're gonna find, they're gonna be very, very reinvigorated to join Toastmasters. And that's just going to add up for even more success. And it's just, I find Toastmasters to be valuable. I know someone that's going that also will find Toastmasters to be valuable. And that's how we're gonna rebuild our district, one step at a time and with leaders who are passionate about Toastmasters and wanting to pass on their passion to the next generation of leaders. But that's it and thank you for your time. Kanan, back over to you. Were there any closing remarks that you wanted to make? No, I think I, I already mentioned that as the club growth, I, I am very uh, excited because our club growth director has come out with many strategies to build this district, to go and go and help the low hanging, uh, sorry, low membership uh, uh, clubs. He's also having plans to evaluate the clubs and make sure that the club quality is raised. So many ways he's tackling. I'm really impressed. 
So let us hope that we all going to be making this district stronger than ever. I'm going to give 10 minutes for any questions or I will yield the back, uh, I will yield the lectern back to the program quality director. Looks like Nora has a question, Nora. Thank you, Kanan and Wesley. I had a quick question about the traveling Toastmasters. Are these available to clubs that have eight or fewer members or is the threshold different? See, this is my plan, how this worked very well. I will tell you what it is. We are going to bring whoever is willing to help those type of resources as a pooled resources, and they will go and help the clubs that, uh, that really requires a club. Why we want to say less than nine? Because those pool will be small. I can't ask them to go every day, okay? So I will ask them to address those clubs that are really in need. That's how um, our uh, club growth director's team also will help me. Kanan, these are the, these are the club that may require. So we will try to assign. It is not Kanan's team. It is going to be helping the district. It will be used by our club growth director. It will be used by our program quality director. And it can be used by all the division directors. If, if some of the club from the division D, Nora, your division requires, we will bring them, we will bring them and help that district, help that club. That is that is a vision. And it worked out very well in some districts. Last year, it worked out, actually this year, 2021, 2022, worked out very well in District 21. So I want to bring that here. This is basically a pool of resource, okay? Pool of resources can join any club in Zoom. And there are people who are willing to help, who are not working, who are retired, who are ready to work. And even in the evening they can work you know if they if after work they can spend some time that is a is this answer your question nora yes i was more focused on what was that threshold nine or fewer oh uh, I, I that is the artificial threshold even if you have a district i will let, give you a, this is just to make sure that the resources are utilized properly see for example i will tell you there is a club who has got 12 members. Kanan, I need somebody to come and help us in the club quality. Yes, this team will go and help them. You know what I'm saying? But why we put one to nine? Because we want to first attack. We want to bring the paid clubs to, uh, we want to raise the number of paid clubs. That is our goal also. Thank you. That's why we put less than nine. Thanks. Excellent. You have a question from John and Mary Kellenberger. John and Mary. My question is, what are your motivational seeds so that the individual member will see the value in attending a Mastery Monday? Just as an example, as to why there is such low participation from the individual member regardless of what night or time you intend to host these in the future. Thank you. I'm not sure whether the Mastery Monday was picked by the members. I'm not sure, but I'm going to continue assuming that Mastery Monday is liked by my members. Uh, I, I want to say that as a, as a program quality director, I bring this experience, okay? I was running a seminar Sunday because why I call seminar Sunday because I was running every Sunday bi-weekly. I used to advertise that to all the club president and I made sure that it was put in the Facebook. I shared it in the newsletter. You know what? On a bright sunny day, the I, I, I used to run between four and five because the members pick that time, four and five. And on a sunny day, I get 10, 20 members because the motivation has to come from the members, okay? We can tell them, we can help them, we can provide any type of training, but we can inspire them to do, attend the training and to be successful Toastmasters. But the motivation has to come from the inside, right? Even though we tell them, even though we do them, we, we inspire them, but the motivation has to come from that end also. 
So we are going to do that. I think this time, uh, seven to eight is one of the good timing. Unless because I don't know, I I don't know whether people will be interested in uh, or do in attending on a weekend. But once again, we will ask the member. We will ask the members what is your preference. We will go by that. Thank you. Okay, we have about five minutes remaining. Are there any other questions for either Kanan or Wesley? Or any comments? Questions or comments? Oh, Nora has I, I can't there. help myself, sorry. Uh, this is more for Wesley. Uh, I can't promise anything right now, but I am seriously thinking about starting an advanced club. So I may be reaching out to you for advice on that. I know the process is slightly different from forming an open community club in terms of the members requirements, where they can come from, how many have to be new members and so on. But I'm very interested. I've got an idea. I'm giving a speech on Wednesday about my proposal for a, for a new club. So just letting you know, putting that out there. Don't know if I'll be able to launch it this year. Yep. I'm like the, the and the, division director. <laughs> well, I would say that that's awesome. Yeah, and, yeah. definitely. You know, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help you pro provide the resources on you know, how you can get the you know, your advanced club launch. I can tell you that I am a member of advanced club, Polish professional advanced Toastmasters in division A and without question, I brag about it all the time. This without question is the Ivy League of Toastmasters. You think of all of the DTMs, all of the area directors, division directors, you know, we have these three former, uh, you know, pro uh, district directors, including Ben Chris. <laughs> so it is just, it truly is amazing. And the growth that I have developed, you know, throughout the four years that I've been a member of Polish Special Toastmasters is just, it's, I, I almost don't have the words. It just, it really has just been amazing. And I strongly recommend you know, attending Advanced Toastmasters Club and being a member to help grow your skills even further. Uh, I'm definitely on board and provide you those tools. Mine's going to have a twist to it, though. I'm going to bring improv and storytelling into it. Great job, Nora. Thank you. Oh, that's my little flavor. Thank you, Nora, for that. Any other questions, comments, concerns, support? Fears, excitement, <laughs> all of the above. Any emotion you have to bring to the table that you would like to express and discuss with Kanan and Leslie? Nora's ready for a party. So that is her, she's ready to go. Yep, absolutely. Oh, so our outgoing administrative manager, Kathy Lovemore, has a question, Miss Kathy. Uh, it's more of a comment. Um, Kanan, I like the idea as well as Wesley about the traveling Toastmasters. Um, when you were, mentioned that, I thought of something that you probably already thought of, but uh, have those people that can come in and kind of invigorate those struggling clubs with new ideas. For example, someone that's very creative with table topics a wonderful evaluator, someone that's on point with speaking, um, someone that's a great evaluator. Um, that's, and I think people will get ideas from that and kind of invigorate those struggling clubs. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. All right, great. Well, that leaves us one minute remaining. I would like to thank Kanan for coming on this evening and giving us his vision for District 18. And surprise, surprise, bringing Wesley with him, our incoming club growth director. Please give them both a, a round of applause. 
and lots of support for the incoming Toastmaster year 2022 to 2023. We look forward to hearing more from both of you as you start your year uh, coming up at the end of this week. So it is becoming that much closer. So never fear. We are all here for you and support you and are very excited for your journey. With that, I bid you adieu for this evening and the last Mastery Monday for the 2021-2022 Toastmaster year. Nora's saddened, Kathy is excited, and I'm somewhere in between. <laughs> So thank you all for joining us tonight. We appreciate each and every one of you. Have a wonderful evening and thank you so much for attending. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.